Uh, in this episode, I have an interview with Gabe Risman from Your Stake. This is All in One Financial with Bill Holiday. We discuss financial planning issues around investing, taxes, estate planning, insurance, and retirement planning. This is brought to you by AIO Financial, the only financial planning firm working with clients all over the U.S., AIOfinancial.com. Thank you for joining me on this episode. I have an interview with Gabe, who is the president of Your Stake which is a petition platform for shareholders and an impact reporting uh, platform. And Gabe's background in data science comes from his years at Yale studying computational astrophysics. His thesis focuses on dark matter, but he he has an interesting uh, background of how he got into sustainable, responsible impact investing through his divestment campaign there. Uh, He has experience with the ESG desk at Rockefeller and Company, as well as Connecticut Green Bank. And he's currently sits on the board of the Intentional Endowments Network. So let me go to the interview with Gabe and we discuss your stake. All right, Gabe, thank you for joining me. I appreciate, appreciate you taking the time. Thank you, Bill. I'm excited to be on here. Um, I, I've heard a few of your podcasts before, and uh, today's actually a two podcast day for me, so very exciting. Oh, good deal. <laughs> All right. Um, so you're the president of Your Stake, and it's you and Patrick are the founders. Are there other people involved? Do you have a team at this point? Yeah. Yeah, it was Patrick and myself for quite some time, but recently we've started growing, and uh, we've added to our team pretty rapidly over the past couple months. Good. That, that's great because there's, I mean, a lot of data to sort, sort through and the interface seems really complicated. So that's, that's great. You have a team working on it. So can you tell me how you got into this space, the environmental, social governance, SRI world? Sure. Actually, nine years ago when I met Patrick, uh, it was as fossil fuel divestment campaigners at Yale. We were trying to push our university to um, essentially take action, send a really strong signal through its endowment that fossil fuel companies needed to change their practices or um, what they were doing right now was unacceptable. So we actually took a, an interesting uh, or nuanced approach in our campaign where we specifically focused on uh, climate lobbying that these fossil fuel companies were doing and specifically focused on how they were lobbying to obstruct climate progress and to fund disinformation on climate change and actually worked with the Yale endowment to achieve a decent amount of success. So um, the endowment manager, David Swenson, has sent letters and communicates with all of his private equity managers, uh, asking them to consider climate risk really heavily in what they're doing. Then we also got the ethical investment committee at Yale to engage with Exxon and have meetings with Exxon about their climate lobbying. And of course, there's a huge campaign. It's not just the the credit from what we're doing, but Exxon Exxon actually did leave uh, one of the major climate denial organizations that was a a big target of our campaign. So we realized from this fossil fuel divestment campaign uh, that we were doing that there's a lot of power in sustainable investing in general. And while we were students, we actually also were not satisfied with just sticking with and and using divestment as the one tool because we knew there was a huge, large toolkit that included ESG integration, shareholder engagement, uh, all this other stuff. So we we set out on a a research mission uh, focused on how to create the most impact and impact investing and realized that there's a lot of potential and a lot of impact that comes from shareholder engagement and a lot of impact that comes from uh, integrating the right data in the, in the right way. So we created Your Stake, essentially learning the biggest challenges, uh, which in our mind were enabling shareholder engagement for more people, and then also data transparency. And I'm sure you've seen this, Bill, that ESG data right now, it scores, and everyone has different methodologies, and it's really hard to understand what's going on. 
And we tried to simplify that and show the actual information instead of just the score behind our black box methodology. We focus on transparency and have found that that's helped advisors tell the story and, and help to grow the movement for sustainable investing. Yeah, so your stake is really two platforms. You have the petition platform for stakeholders and that's for, or for shareholders and that's everyone who is a shareholder. And then you have this impact reporting and that's just for advisors, right? Is that the case? Yeah. Correct. Um, and I have, I, I mean, I, I really like your platform because I have found that there's a big void or there's difficulty. Each fund will have their impact report, annual impact report, and to try to consolidate that or to show people that they're making an impact, it's so hard to communicate. And so I really like this objective, but yeah, I imagine it's a lot of data. Yeah, it, it is a lot of data. And historically, what's had to happen is having teams of 100 analysts that go through company annual reports every year and talk to companies or send out surveys. And that has made ESG data really expensive. But one of the, one of the benefits of essentially FinTech and the, uh, the new technologies that have been developed that a lot of the data processing can become automated. So we spend a ton of time trying to understand what the most important and best data is, highest quality data to put in front of our advisors and then spend a lot of time setting up the processes to pull that in. But the great thing about what we're able to do is that we can, in a sense, uh, set an automation. So set, um, uh, allow for that process it to be updated continuously um, through automated processes without needing to have analysts go through everything year after year. So that allows us to get more data and focus more of our time on uh, designing an, an interface that can help you explain it and communicate it and, and grow. Yeah, no, I think that's, that's uh, where the lack is. There is there are other reporting systems, but I, I like just the, to be able to explain to a client that here's some funds we might want to compare and look at uh, doing differently to meet your, uh, your goals or your objectives. I guess, would you mind just sharing some of your, your software or some of your, uh, what your platform looks like? And I know we have an audio audience for the podcast, so we'll try to step through this. And I will put a link to the video and I'll put some PDF or some uh, images in the, in the blog. Absolutely. So I think I'm going to start by showing one of our new report styles, which is really exciting. We call it our metaphor reports. Yeah. And what these do is they actually show you based on how much you're investing in a portfolio. That means that you own a share of the companies that you invest in. And as an owner, you're responsible for a share of their activities. So for example, if you own Tyson Foods, and Tyson Foods is slaughtering, I don't remember if it's two or six or, or several billion chickens and you own one share, uh, I think that you own, you're responsible for the slaughter of, of like five chickens based on your ownership, making you responsible for some portion of Tyson's activities. So that's something that really scares a lot of vegans because now they can connect and understand that their investments are like, they're actually real, they're tangible and real. And on the positive side, if you're owning portions of, uh, of companies that have more women in management positions or you own portions of companies that are producing clean energy, then you're responsible for some good things happening as a part owner of, of those activities. So I'll do a quick screen share. Yeah, great. No, I like it, making it very exactly. concrete what the impact is uh, over a period of time for a given amount of investments. Yeah, exactly. So this sample portfolio shows if you invest 1 million over the next 10 years in this portfolio, uh, you will be responsible for 21 fewer asthma attacks compared to the state of the U.S. if you're investing in a, in a total U.S. portfolio. And that's based on harm done by toxic air pollution. Uh, and that's coming from EPA data. And then we can also pull in information to show you that your investments will be responsible for 416 more homes powered by clean energy 
521 more meetings led by women and over a million fewer pieces of plastic in the ocean. Hmm. That's great. And this is, so you're taking, if someone has a portfolio of individual stocks, I get it. You're just looking at those stocks. If it's funds, you're looking at the underlying holdings and then pulling out the dollar amount or percentage amount in each individual company and then putting exactly. it together. So we think transparency is really crucial at your stake. So for any of these metrics, you can actually click in to see more. Oh, there so for go. example, for this piece of plastic in the ocean, you can see which funds uh, are contributing to plastic pollution. And then you can click in on each fund to see which companies held by that fund are uh, producing plastic that's going to the ocean. And then here's all the, on the right side is plastic pollution from the, the benchmark, which is the, the state of the US essentially, how much plastic are you saving compared to the US total stock market index? And if you click in, you can see the, uh, the plastic production from Exxon, that Exxon is responsible based on its petrochemical operations. So essentially we have all this uh, academic research showing and market research and looking at Exxon's annual report to see how much ethylene it's producing, then how much packaging production that leads to based on the downstream products of ethylene and how much plastic in the ocean based on plastic production and then how many pieces of plastic based on the, the metric tons of plastic and click on our citations to be able to see why. But we, we uh, obviously page one shows here's your impact. And if you ever have questions or like there are many different methodologies with different data providers, you wanna see what's going on. We think it's, it's crucial and really try to show that full transparency to, to understand what's driving this. Yeah, that's great. So you, you click on whatever category you want and then it'll compare your portfolio with the overall benchmark. And then you can click on each company and get more details. Yeah, that's a lot of data, that's great. Well, and that gives up some, I mean, looking at it too, it, it gives it some backing that it actually has some meaning, these numbers. It's not just some, I don't know, feel good uh, indicator. There's actually some evidence behind it. Yeah, uh, that's something that we really try to focus on. And people really need that. We've talked to a lot of advisors actually, and you've probably experienced this too with your colleagues. Advisors get an ESG portfolio, they get a, a socially responsible portfolio, and then they expect that new clients that care about social issues and environmental issues will then start allocating their money into that uh, socially responsible portfolio. But a lot of times it's not happening. That just having the portfolio doesn't lead to that. And sometimes it's actually worse because if you have a, a socially responsible portfolio and your client says, oh, that's great, why? <laughs> or, right. oh, that's great, what's happening? <laughs> and then the advisor, it's now opening up a can of worms and the advisor doesn't really have generally the tools to be able to have that conversation. The advisor can say, oh, it's a, a 4.3 out of five. Um, but especially if there's a company that's included that the client doesn't like and, and a score doesn't justify what's going on when there's divergent methodologies and pe different people having different values. So. That's what really drove us to, to take our approach. No, I like that. And if there's an issue that's really important to a client, they can dig in on that issue and, and make sure that the portfolio meets their needs. No, it gives you a lot more because you're right. In general, you just have to have a general conversation of, well, I like Domini and Calvert. And I mean that, oh, they're doing good and screening well, but you don't have anything to back that up. They just have to trust you. Exactly. I mean, you do have the shareholder engagement stories That's uh, from each of the fund managers. Yeah, you, it seems like you have a strong reaction to that. So I'll well, let you go. You, you have <laughs> them, but each company has the reports. It's still hard to sort them out. And then even just pulling, oh, they engaged on one issue doesn't really give you a, why should I invest this versus this? Yeah, but, that's true. <laughs> But it That's helps. You're right. I mean, they're, each fund is doing what they can to tell their story and, and you can pull from that, but it's, it's just hard to go through each one. It's true. And that I mentioned that most of your stake is pretty automated in terms of the data that we're able to pull in. The shareholder engagement stories that we collect, we are unable to automate that. And the reason why is that we try to apply a, a rigorous standard. Uh, there are a lot of 
mutual fund managers that put out shareholder engagement reports. And here's how it goes. We talked to this company and they told us they're doing great things. Then we talked to this other company and they told us that we're thinking about doing good things. And then we talked to this third company and they said, we're thinking about doing other good things. <laughs> and that's the shareholder engagement report. It's, it's explaining the information gathering that the mutual funds are doing. And we don't, we don't want to count that as impact. Uh, it probably is good that they're having the conversation, but right. we actually go through manually and sometimes they use tricky language to, to try to claim more credit, but we go through manually and actually make sure the companies are doing something on the issues that the, uh, the fund managers are talking about. He can't always say as a result of those conversations, but if you're a fund manager and you're pushing a company to do something and then later it does that thing, that's when we're giving credit for shareholder engagement success. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's, that's a lot of work. Yeah, you could just track how many shareholder resolutions did they sponsor or co-sponsor, but still they could be having dialogues and making changes without that. It's, it's, yeah. There's not an easy indicator there unless you do talk to each company or, or dig through their reports. That's, that's a lot of work. That's exactly right. Yeah, glad you're doing it. <laughs> I mean, I am. I'm glad you're doing it because otherwise you're you are left with a lot of ambiguity. You don't know, oh, is this company really engaging or are they just greenwashing, making it sound nice? It's, it's very true. And we are seeing more and more and more and more engagement, even from the big players uh, with each passing year. So uh, we started looking through these reports on engagement in 2016, 2017, and there was nothing um, there was there was very little. People would say stewardship is important and, and wouldn't give any examples. I'm talking about the big fund managers, the, yeah, yeah. the smaller funds and some European ones. They were giving a lot of information for a while. That's been their core part of their strategy. But the bigger ones said it's important and, and we keep our conversations private. And now they're, they're being pressed by investors to do more and disclose more. So we're very encouraged by that trend. But uh, sometimes I think there's been a lot of criticism from some of the activist community that the language uh, is a, a bit ahead of the action from sure. some of the larger fund managers that are doing ESG stuff, but uh, the action is catching up. Could you talk about your petition platform? One, how do petitions get there and how can people engage? It, it, it's open to everyone, correct? Sure. Actually, so uh, we started out your stake as a petition platform, not even focused on the impact reports. And our goal was to let any individual um, participate in shareholder engagement, push their companies to change, push their fund managers to change uh, as a verified shareholder. Uh, and what we realized is that a lot of the people that care the most about this, that are uh, interested in investing sustainably using their shareholder power to create change. They're working with sustainable financial advisors and, and they want their advisor to do that uh, on their behalf. So actually what your stake does is, is two things. Individuals are able to access the petitions through their financial advisor. So if you are a financial advisor and you enable petitions, then your clients are able to go in and sign petitions because they've been enabled by their financial advisor. Or as an individual, you can kind of de delegate that shareholder engagement authority to your financial advisor. So financial advisors can sign petitions on your behalf or enable you to sign a petition. Um, but we're, we're no longer allowing anyone to, uh, to just walk in and, and um, sign a petition because we found that it's generally a much better experience if it goes through the advisor one last point on why, imagine you're an individual and you wanna create change through shareholder engagement by telling Exxon to, to reduce its carbon footprint. If you tell Exxon to reduce its carbon footprint, you're one person that has some impact, but if you get your advisor <laughs> to do this, the advisor has a whole network. The advisor has a lot more power, has those institutional relationships. So it's just like uh, advisors using their leverage to push companies individuals can use their leverage to get their advisors to start taking action. So that's how I, mean, we, I could see that being, I mean, there's probably individuals that would like that, but mostly I see clients wanting us to deal with 
shareholder resolutions or with um, voting proxies or what, I mean, or deal with engagement or deal with that. So I, I could see that making sense. Do you have any other um, slides you could share about your program? Sure, I'd be happy to. Um, so I think one thing that a lot of uh, advisors and clients like doing is, is comparing their existing portfolio or, uh, or a benchmark to how can I make it better to an ESG portfolio. So I can pull up a quick screen share of what that might look like. Um, so we have a portfolio impact comparison of the S&P 500 versus a sample ESG portfolio. And you can see that there's way less toxic air pollution in this portfolio, that there's double the clean energy companies, that you're totally fossil fuel free, you have less animal exploitation. And an important thing about this is um, we still have the click-throughs if you wanna to click to see which companies in the S&P are fossil fuels that are not in the ESG portfolio. And then the way that I actually came up with these particular metrics to show is we have a, a values questionnaire. So mm -hmm. clients can take a values questionnaire and this one came out that this person is a planet defender. So they care about the environment and a friend of animals. So you wanna show the animal exploitation and advisors when creating impact reports are able to personalize the impact reports to the values of their client, either because they just know the client and have conversations or through our values questionnaire that uh, makes this easy. That's great. Just to focus on the issues most important, because this could take, I mean, it, it could be very distracting to go down a whole bunch of issues. Right. When there's, when there's 50, 60 things showing up on a page, it's, uh, it's oftentimes much better to have a focused conversation on the issues that matter most. Yeah, that's super. That's great. And you could compare any two portfolios? Any two portfolios. That's great. So sometimes advisors might use this to rebalance. Um, hey, I've got an ESG portfolio or I've got a, a portfolio and I'm going to add an ESG fund in. What's that going to do uh, from an impact standpoint? You can do yeah, the same thing. That's with, a great uh, tool. Metaphor reports actually too. Uh, that's a new feature that we just added. It lets you compare uh, my ESG portfolio compared to uh, a prospect's portfolio, how many chickens that I'm going to save. So not just compared to the total U.S., but like uh, it's actually comparing your portfolio to the prospect's portfolio on uh, these tangible impact outcomes to show what you can do there. Yeah, that's a great tool for the person coming in saying, why should I move my portfolio? You can make it real concrete what, what, what that'll do. Yeah, great. Uh, do you have any other, any other areas you want to share? Uh, I think that mostly covers it. Um, well, I, I'd say one last thing that is really exciting to me. Our personal goals, Patrick and myself, we, we start out as climate activists and data scientists and realized that there was a need that we could help solve. Um, our goal is impact. And what is most exciting and encouraging to us is our shareholder engagement campaigns. We actually had a success uh, where we had over $600 million in assets support a petition. And then the, uh, the petition organizers used that support to actually push for, uh, for a company change. So there was recent news about that in, in December that uh, BlackRock updated a lot of its proxy voting policies. And that was partly as a result of conversations that were spurred on by your stake. So that's exciting to us. And also we're having some advisors now talk to their portfolio managers, oh, sorry, talk to, to their asset managers, the fund companies that are running their portfolios and, uh, and talk to them about, hey, why are prisons in this portfolio? Or hey, yeah. uh, moving on boards really matters to my clients uh, and gender diversity really matters to my clients. And in your fund, uh, that's not something that's happening. And, and those conversations, we think essentially it's, it's uh, scooting values up the chain. So clients express their values through preferences, advisors demonstrate the, the portfolios in alignment with the values. And the advisor is the intermediary has so much power and, and can create so much value by communicating with the client and communicating with the fund managers about uh, what you need to see. Yeah, no, I've had that, ex that experience using the program, seeing these holdings that I couldn't explain to a client why they have them. 
And so we call the fund company and ask, get some clarification um, why they'd be holding something like that. But no, that's super. That, that's wonderful. In the impact, the topics on the petitions, who is generating those topics? Yeah, that's a combination of nonprofits like the Union of Concerned Scientists or Public Citizen, as well as uh, socially responsible fund managers, the ones that are oftentimes leading traditional shareholder engagement campaigns. So we have some that are running their campaigns and they put a petition on your stake sure. to really get extra support. Um, then we, we also have a, a couple um, shareholder resolution filers, individual shareholder resolution filers that put their petitions on there to get more support as well. Yeah, no, I could see if you're trying to push someone, having that as a backup, this much money is behind me, that would help your argument for sure. Oh, that's wonderful. No, I really like the work you're doing and I see the program evolving as time goes. I mean, you're definitely not just leaving it stagnant, it, it's moving along. So yeah, I appreciate that. Um, well, th anything else uh, anyone should, if someone wants to reach out to you, where they can find you, what your best communication sure, is. They can go to yourstake.org. Um, that's S-T-A-K-E. Or they can email me at Gabe at yourstake.org. All right, perfect. All right, Gabe, thank you very much for your time. This was real helpful. Thank you, Bill. And, and uh, love that you're getting a lot out of your stake. And thanks so much for having me on the program. Great yeah, I appreciate it. Take care. Thank you. All right, thank you for listening to our interview with Gabe on AIO Financial. This has been brought to you by AIOfinancial.com. If you need help with any part of your finances, please contact AIO Financial for a free meeting, AIOfinancial.com. We do have a free ebook about sustainable, responsible impact investing. It's at impact financialplanners.com backslash SRI ebook. All right. And we are working on offering a service to help financial and advisors implement sustainable, responsible impact investing. Um, right now we're working on either hourly consulting or a uh, group uh, to share. We have a forum. We have newsletter, a buy list, we have webinars. Yeah, I, I'd appreciate anyone's feedback, whether they think that's a, an attractive idea, if they have any issues with it, or if they'd like to see something different. You can go to impactinvestingfirms.com and look to the For Advisors tab. I do appreciate any comments, questions you have for us. Really, any, any feedback is helpful, good or bad. I'd really appreciate it. And please subscribe, leave a comment, rate. I appreciate it. All right, hope you stay well. Thank you.